be talking about recycling packaging, but how about recycling money? I don't know if you've heard the breaking news that the uh, Financial Sector Conduct Authority has fined Marcus Euster 475 million rand over false Steinhoff financial statements. I know that is news that is going to be welcome to some, but perhaps a figure that's going to be too low for some's liking. Uh, but Wendy, yeah, talk about the consequences finally starting to catch up with yeah. you. Yeah, I'm just reading the press release which came in a short while ago. It's, the investigation found that Mr. Eusser and Mr. Dirk Schreiber made or published false, misleading or deceptive statements about Steinhoff International Holdings Limited and Steinhoff International Holdings Envy, which they knew or ought reasonably to have known were false, misleading or deceptive. Deceptive. How about that? Okay. Mm. We're not doing consumer talk all about deceptive business practices today. <laughs> we should the be. Record, but it's quite, <laughs> quite significant breaking news uh, to be mentioning. That could be a show for it's another day. a long day. time coming. <laughs> yes. Okay, for sure. Wendy, we are talking today about recycling mm. again, and for several reasons. One, because it's a, pa- a, st- a subject Wendy's passionate about. Two, because recycling of packaging is something I'm quite closely attached to because I have a husband who works in the packaging business. But thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, this past Monday was World Recycling Day. Yes. And you used the opportunity to go and check out a new system. Well, I say new, it's not brand new, but a new iteration of a system. That's a good way to put it, yes. That that rewards uh, consumers, incentivizes consumers for taking the time to recycle. And just to say that we're going to talk a lot, not just about that system today, but we're going to talk about do's and don'ts of recycling and mistakes that people continue to make um, in in, in putting, you know, a lot of people I think doing it with the best of intention, Wendy, thinking they're doing the right thing by paying for a recycling service or using a recycling drop-off or whatever it may be, not realizing that the way they're going about it it's, yeah. is either, actually either they're putting defeating the objects. things in that shouldn't be there, that aren't going to be recycled anywhere, and so you're going to give someone some a job in sorting it uh, and, and sending it off to landfill, or you they are the right thing, but you're not you know you're treating them properly. They've still got contents inside and there's no lid and so they spill out and contaminate the rest and it's just a waste of your time and everybody else's. And, of course, the environment suffers because your well, your good intentions are, are, are out the window. Totally wasted. And the yeah. person doing the processing suffers because instead of mm. a clean item to recycle, mm. they're presented with decaying food waste inside it, which Horrible. nobody and wants. And worse, yeah. which we'll get to yeah. later. We'll get to that. First, though, <laughs> tell us where okay. you went and what you saw on So Monday. I was invited by Pick and Pay, these, these um, reverse... Uh, vending machines are popping up all over the place. Um, uh, so Pick and Pay has got into a, a joint venture with um, Polyco. So um, that's a, a not-for-profit uh, mm. recycling organization. Um, and so they are putting out a whole lot of new machines. And this one was at Canal Walk. So off I went on Monday morning. And um, it's such a, a, a novel thing because... You know, vending machines, you put your money in and you get, if you're lucky, the <laughs> machine will spit out whatever it is you've a paid for. A chocolate or a yeah. chips. Yeah. But with this, you, you're you the one feeding in the product. I might get an empty can or an empty bottle or carton, but it has great value. Whereas, you know, back in the day, we just put it in the bin and it went off to the so-called dump, we called it in those yeah. days. And that was the end of it. And now... Um, there is value in a lot of what we used to uh, just discard and uh, to fill up the landfills. And so, yeah, you put in your, your empty milk bottle or whatever it is, and you are the one that gets the reward in whatever form it takes. Mm-hmm. So this isn't new, as you said. The first time I saw one of these was back in 2018 when Woolworths trialed one at their uh, Palmyra store. Um, I was living in Durban the t- at the time. I remember flying down, especially for this event. It was a biggie, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of excitement in the store with especially children, you know, having a go. It's a lovely way to, to get that. To them. Exactly. Yeah. Although usually what happens is it's the, they get this news from at school, and they go home and say, but, Mummy, why aren't we, <laughs> yeah, oh, why aren't we <laughs> doing this? Doing yeah. a separate recycling thing. Anyway, so, yes, this was a shiny uh, new store at Palmyra Junction, and as I said at the time, on this very show, Pippa, I said, yeah. you punch in your cell number and then shove the bottle or can into a hole and provided its barcode has been scanned into the machine. And that's a big but because these, it might, the product that you bought and want to now put into this machine might be um, fully recyclable and being recycled, more to the point. But its particular barcode, that particular product's barcode hasn't been scanned into the system. And so oh. it will spit it out. Um, and then, and then it's up to us to actually. There's means of, you know, alerting the company, and then 
that barcode gets well, put in and the next the person system. yes and that's so it's sort of there's 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 that sort of consumer involvement as well um so in the first month of use on that one time in that small store um 191 people bought their bottles and cans to recycle 73 percent of them were women interestingly 40 percent of them were bet- between the ages of 19 and, and 25. Oh, that's a very interesting stat. Yes. So the youngsters really embraced it. More. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So that was then. Was it, I mean, as you said at the time, very novel. Then, then it was brand new. Uh, as you've mentioned, they have now started filtering in a little bit uh, in, in more common use, but still something of a novelty. It's novelty because it's very expensive. Did the concept take off? When yeah, did it's it go up? It's taking from, yeah. off, yes. So uh, six years on almost, um, just about all the major supermarket retailers have them in select stores. Um, because they're expensive and because there's quite a lot of logistics involved and, you know, it's just it's not a magic thing, you know, you put, they need to be collected and sorted, sorted and then there's that whole system of the reward and how it's done. Is it on the app? What are, what form do the rewards take? Uh, and all the rest. So tell us about the one you saw this week. Well, how, how does that work? It's a uh, pick and pay in Canal Walk. It is a pick and yep. pay and, um, it's sitting at the entrance to the store, at the exit to the store, um, and they going to be uh, it's one of ten which are going to be installed in this in the pick and pay stores across Hotting and uh, the Eastern and Western Cape. They're not saying when this is going to happen, but very soon later on this year, the machines will be integrated with its pick and pay smart shopper program to give customers points in exchange for those more cartons, jars, water bottles, tetra packs, etc. As one of the rewards options so pick and pay also piloted an rvm re- reverse vending machine uh, in 2018 mm-hmm. and they went on to then put four other machines so you know that's in six years wasn't a lot but now yeah. they're ramping up with these 10 that are going out now and 20 more planned through another partnership in the middle of this, this year so it's, so it's definitely getting some traction now yeah, yeah. So you can get rewards options either in cash or vouchers to be spent in the Imagined Earth app with various rewards partners. As you'd expect, the rewards are not huge. I meant to look this up. For I said, how many two-liter cartons of milk, you know, those milk cartons, would you need to get whatever? And I was told, I think it's 40, 30 to 40 for 10 rand. So we're not talking massive, massive rewards. rewards. But interestingly, there is an, an option to get airtime and data and that and the context of this country is very popular. So I, I just think it's it's a lovely idea. The, the volumes and the scheme of things aren't going to be massive in themselves, but it's putting recycling, you know, literally where we're buying our stuff, it's putting the whole need to recycle, not just for the environment and because we've got immense pressure on our landfill, uh, um, but also because of the job opportunities Absolutely. that it creates. Yeah. Um, huge. So it, it's kind of, you can't, it's not something that can be back of mind, I think. And as Pick and Pay said, you can literally, as some people do, and hopefully they remember to pay for it, for them, you buy, you, you're really thirsty, you get a bottle of water or whatever out of the fridge, you drink it in store, you can literally pay and then pop your empty bottle with the lid on mind okay. into the machine, you know, all in one and loop. And get your points back or your yes, couple of minutes whatever of you choose. airtime or a couple yeah. of uh, megabytes of data as, as a reward. Now, you've mentioned the barcode scanning issue already. Wendy, I think an important thing to highlight here is obviously not all recycling is created equal and not all kinds yeah. of products are, are the same and of as much valuable. So you're going to get rewarded, I would imagine, more for some items than for others. And then this is an, also an education exercise to know what which recyclables have the most value in the industry because of all the various economic factors involved. So you get 10 cents for a PET bottle, 15 cents for a can. So cans more valuable than bottles. 11 cents for a glass bottle. Mm. So somewhere in between. Um, uh, so yeah, and okay. uh, the machines aren't very big. I had a look, they opened the door and I was yeah. very impressed to see w- the machine was almost full and everything in there was clean and gorgeous. So the shoppers and that's Pick and Pay Canal store, obviously, you know, doing it properly. There was no smell. That's the nice thing about it because you don't really want to be to greeted be with, on, yeah. you know, an awful smell because someone isn't. Wash, rinse rinse it out bottle. and rinsing out. No, that's not wasteful. You could use your dishwash your your dishwashing 
uh, water from the sink before you let it out. Just you know, wash it out with that. Now I want to share this message so you can respond immediately, Wendy, because somebody's point uh, comment on the WhatsApp line is it sounds like pick and pay is planning on stealing poor people's jobs with these machines. Oh my goodness! Uh, no, I mean. This is a collection point. Somebody in the chain is still going to have to empty Absolutely. that machine, sort that rubbish, uh, and take it further along the chain, surely. Yes, absolutely. I mean, these they don't magically land up, you know, in a recycling um, facility. They need to be sorted. They need to get there. Um, there's a lot of uh, job employment along the way. And as I said, there's not going to be massive volumes. And the... the, the, the um, Waste pickers, or there's a much better word, the uh, upcyclers. There's a much nicer word because these people, armies of people who who earn a living out of doing what we should be doing, and we're not doing it. So they're getting the bulk of of their um, recyclables from w the landfills, yeah, um, and other places where they've been discarded. So. A few, you know, these machines are, I don't know what percentage it would be even by the end of this year of supermarkets. It's a tiny percentage overall. It's really it's really a, a really interactive marketing exercise for recycling, if you think about it. Yeah. Um, it's never going to be huge scale, but um, it's it, it, it has its place. And as I say, it's 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 everything that goes with it with the exercise for me it's the conscientizing role exactly. I mean, think about it think about it practically if you are recycling in your own home you know how many black bags full of recycled waste you you produce each week nobody is suggesting that every customer should be taking all of those and feeding them into the pick and pay machine to be take um, them, well, for me it would take far too long and it would take up half the store's floor volume for yes, one other thing exactly. but it's about it's about making it front and center impossible to ignore or overlook that you need to recycle and I think raising awareness of what can be recycled which is one of the key reasons we're doing this segment today so let's talk about what is and isn't desirable for recycling purposes Wendy and what listeners need to know before for example they use a machine like this or for that matter put things into their own recycling bag at home okay so, so first thing is to keep it clean as I said rinse the bottles with gray water from your sink or wherever. Keep the cap on so nothing leaks and contaminates the rest of the recycling. Even if the cap is a separate substrate and can't go into um, the same recycling stream, so let's say PET it needs to go somewhere else, the sorters know this and they will will sort appropriately. But the main thing is keeping the lid on is is keeps everything clean and tidy. You're not going to get spillage and whatever. Um so uh, the big picture, well, I just I just thought, let's look at, if you wouldn't mind, before we get to the do's and don'ts, yeah. um, at this um, event at uh, Pick and Bay Canal Walk on Monday was Sam Bennett of a company called Strategic Waste Solutions. And she supplied me with data on what's been recycled via these machines in South Africa since they were introduced in 2018 across retailers. Mm -hmm. So the top categories, um, and by the way, it takes, uh, where was my information? It, it, these machines in terms of capacity, I uh, can't find it now. Uh, oh, yes. How, how, what's the capacity? Um, between 650 and 750 weight item, waste items or 375 two-liter milk bottles. So that's quite a volume if okay. you think about that. Um, I would also say if you can, stamp on them to reduce, to flatten them. To flatten the volume, them. Yeah. It's actually quite a fun exercise once you get used <laughs> to it. Okay, so the top brand, the top categories, soft drinks bottles by far, followed by water bottles, beer bottles, milk cartons, and energy drink bottles. So lots of drinks. Mm -hmm. And the top brands by units recycled, Coca-Cola, first choice, that's the Long Life Milk. Milk, yes. In the Citra Pack, Aquile, Savannah, mm -hmm. Valpre, Heineken, Sprint, Sprite, that must be. Okay. Is it, what is Sprint, unless not I'm not sure. aware of a brand? I think that might have been a misprint on my part. Bon Aqua, water, and Schweppes. Okay, so it, very, very firm emphasis on the drinking bottles and containers there. And again, if, if you know, if, bravo, if you're putting it in to, to get a couple of minutes of airtime or d gigs of data instead of putting it in the trash, sending it to the landfill. Win win. I, for one, I think. think that's a, a win. Yes. All right, we're going to take a very short break. Our All conversation right. will continue um, for the remainder of this hour, and certainly the bulk of the remainder of this hour. We will dive into some of the detail on what can and can't be recycled. We'll attempt to answer some of the many questions coming through. Teresa writing in on the WhatsApp to say, my daughter uses one of these recycling machines in Germany for all of her plastic bottles. She leaves all other recycling in a green bin outside. 
uh, too much recycling to take everything mm. to the store, but she then uses that cash back towards her next shop. So yeah, it's it's not a brand new development. It's not new in South Africa, but it's the latest and it's an example and the fact that they're being re- rolled out in slightly higher numbers suggests that the concept is taking off a little bit. And as Wendy said before the break, a lot of it is to do with the simple marketing of recycling as something yes. which should be part the of culture, our getting the standard culture entrenched. Yeah. existence. So, Wendy, let's talk about the recycling because there are lots of uh, messages coming in about how to, can I, where do I okay. recycle this and that. I'm going to start with this comment, which I think is an important one. Uh, from somebody, if I could just find it because the screen keeps updating, um, the person was making the point about the condition you put your items into the recycling in. Here it is. Please put it out there that when people recycle goods, they need to be clean and dry trying to get through to the stacks of people who otherwise destroy the whole bag you've just just recycled. Won't you just, again, explain why that is? Absolutely, thank you for that. So important. You think you're doing the right thing by putting all your recyclable items in a single bag and paying someone to take it away. But, Wendy, if you – what's the risk that you haven't haven't done it properly? So you're putting a whole lot of different – you know, these initiatives to make it easy for us, whether it's a curbside – you know, from from outside your home or one of these machines, you don't have to separate all your recyclables. You you get to um, put them all into one box or bag, and then behind the scenes, they get you know a lot of workers separate it all out. Um, so you can imagine you, you not only have to think about what you're putting into the recycling bag, but the condition you're putting it in. So mm. you can have you know a takeaway. And just sling it into the bin with all the sauce and the remnants and everything else. It's fine. It's going to landfill. However, if you want the container it came in to be recycled, if it's possible, then, you know, you have to just put it, rinse it, rinse yeah. it and it must be dry. And it's so easy to do. Before you let out your dishwashing water, run it through and put it on the on the rack to dry or whatever works for you. Lean it up against the wall, whatever it is. And when it's dry the next day, and and clean, pop it in the recycling. And if it if something has a cap, if you know if there's remnants of, of moisture, put the cap on. That'll stop it leaking. It'll be taken care of in the sorting process. A little extra step, but at least it hasn't contaminated the rest. You can imagine you've got in the same bag as your plastic bottles or your glass bottles. You've now got um, paper, cardboard paper, which you know is going to go off to a different recycling plant. If it's wet, soggy, messed with food waste, it's not going to happen. It's just going to go straight, diverted, mm. be diverted straight to um, to the to the landfill. And I remember, Pippa, that same time as I went to the um, Woolworths trialing of that first reverse vending machine yeah. in Palmyra Junction, I went straight from that. They took me to a recycling plant run by a, a wonderful woman whose name I forget. But I and I watched the sorting happened and I watched a lot of things being discarded and that was nearly six years ago and I said what percentage and that came from curbside deliveries from yeah. different areas uh, what percentage um, of of the content that you get in here is devoted to landfill and she said 14% at the time I don't know if it's gone up or down but that's mm. really significant and a lot of wasted effort on yeah. everyone's part you know and uh, yeah absolutely uh, so I'm, I'm so glad this person sent in this tip it's something i do as well saying i put my recycled plastic and glass in the dishwasher it always comes out clean and dry i do the same particularly if you've got a There's spaces space a yes, couple of cups I do the here same and there thing. if the top layer is full and you need more coffee cups so you've got to yeah. run the machine put them through they come out beautifully clean yeah. they're put properly dry and then into the recycling bin and the other yeah. thing to save space is with your your uh, drinks bottles, your PETs and your milk bottles, just when they're nice and clean and dry and ready for the bin, stand on them. You save so much volume that way. Mm. Flatten them out and it goes and it really is, it's, it's a volumes game. Absolutely. I've seen yeah, a, in a, terms a of lot collection. of people putting out, uh, for example, they take a lot of delivery or boxes. don't get me started. Without having dismantled them first. And, and all the recycles, so all so. the collectors say, if you, if you take the trouble to read their advice, please flatten. And it makes me so mad. It takes a couple of seconds just to run a knife or even a car key down the tape, flatten it out. Just as you take the thing out, do that. Or maybe wait to see if you want to, if you you need to return return it first. (laughs) Yes. Um, Because I see the guys in my area, they come and they throw these boxes onto the the big cage truck. Yes. 
And then these workers that literally do the rumple stiltskin jumping up and down on those boxes to flatten and make more space. By the time they get to my area, they quite full. And I just think such laziness. I mean, points for, for separating it out and, you know, putting it with the recycling. But can you just go that Do extra step to, to reduce the volume? And please think about the lids as well, particularly when we're talking dairy products. Wendy, to be the person on the receiving end of a bag of recycling, which has gone through several, maybe a day or two in process That's of getting horrid. to in you summer, and then to have to open day in like summer today. Mm. a milk bottle whose cap had not been properly yeah. rinsed out and be confronted with the smell of sour milk. It's a nasty job as it is. Please don't make it worse than it needs to be for the person on the end. The one thing we want to ma mention is the labeling and sleeves on bottles. Wendy, in previous conversations, you have flagged for us that at the time we were speaking, those shrink on labeling sleeves that go over so many bottles were not recyclable. And no. if they weren't removed from the bottle and separated then the whole bottle was ending up in landfill. I Such believe there have been some developments around that. Yes. I, I actually checked in. They didn't send me a press release. I checked in with Woolworth to see, say, look, it is a Global Recycling Day. Well, it was on Monday. We're chatting about such things. Any news? And they gave me several things, one of which was news about shrink sleeves. Most ITs and iced tea products, for example, in the world have what's known as a full-body shrink sleeve. So they are traditionally... PETG, I'm not going to go into the full name of that, which condemns the entire bottle and sleeve to landfall because that sleeve then contaminates the, the recycling the recyclable right, yes. bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So recyclers will not include iced tea bottles or any other PET bottle with a full body uh, PETG shrink sleeve into the recycling process. So Woolworths partnered with its packaging supplier MCC to deliver the first recyclable shrink sleeve in South Africa, the the new fully recyclable sleeve is made of polypropylene and floats in the recycling wash plant, thereby not contaminating the PET material. Um, the bottle itself is also colorless to improve its recyclability because your green and your brown bottles, a lot of companies still use because it, you know, it, it resonates with their brand and they look. The marketing is more important to them than the recyclability. And so you said we'll get recycled, but it's much much lower value. It's it's lower it's value less desirable for the, to the pickers. Yes, because yeah. they're not going to get as much, and it can it can't be used for as many things as the clear, like top grade um, P recycled PET can. So anyway, that I thought that was good, but for now, unless it's unless it's um, a Woolworth shrink sleeve. Um, don't put that into your recycling because it's going to be diverted to landfill. It contaminates the recycling process, the shrink okay. sleeve. And I would say think hard about supporting manufacturers who are still putting full sh shrinks on in 2024. Absolutely. Okay. Wendy, the other thing that's changed since we last spoke about this is one of what was one of my big bugbears, that people thought they were doing the right yes. thing by buying a refill pack rather than a whole new bottle of, yes. say, laundry liquid or, or dishwashing liquid, not realizing that the pack was not recycled. It was much better to buy that big plastic bottle, two which liters or whatever, be. which was, and it was, yeah. uh, you know, there's, there was a uh, demand for it. That's um, changed though as it's well. It's changed. And I found this out because I, I sit on the judging panel of the Gold Pack Packaging Awards every year, which I love because I learn so much and hopefully I contribute a little bit from uh, the consumer's perspective. But Unilever entered its Sunlight uh, Fabric Softener refill pouch saying that that is now... Um, Reci recyclable, being recycled. So mm. that very much uh, is, uh, but please rinse it out. <laughs> okay. You can put it into your recycling. And the other thing that's recyclable is um, a huge, an iconic product. Well, packaging that the iconic product comes in, the Woolies um, pre-cooked chickens, roast chickens. Yes. Um, it comes in a, a new uh, plastic bag um, and that's fully recyclable as well. But Clearly, as we've just been saying, if you just slop it into the recycling bin without washing with, off the bits without, of you're chicken, you're totally. I mean, you're actually yeah. doing more harm than good because you're going to contaminate the whole lot. Okay. So just rinse that as well, let it dry off, and you can put it in in the recycling. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, Mary Newland's asking. Just please explain again what a shrink sleeve is. I'm not sure how else um, to say it. It's it's it's, it's sort of, sort like of stuck on. It's completely wrap. stuck on. Um, it it has quite a lot of visual appeal, which is why uh, some a lot of brands still use them. But it's it's a huge no no to recycling plants. They will not accept it. I'm I'm trying to think of a of a product. I know like Lucozade, for example, used to come into uh, for a lot of slack with 
uh, a lot of flack from one major um i tell you what we'll take a short ad break while we look, look up an example that we can give you mary to demonstrate from a product that's easy to to spot in the stores right now and uh, we'll give you the answer right after this bruce thank you uh, for sending me your description of uh, a shrink sleeve mary was asking before the break what is that bruce's description is think of it as a colorful skin tight active wear for bottles <laughs> It is a very good description. It's, it's like actually, lycra for bottles. It's, really. Yeah, it's heat shrunk onto the bottle. So that sort of, you, you can, if you take a knife to the sort of one little edge, you can get it off. And yeah. I, it's certainly a, a good idea if there's a, you know, recycle underneath a PET bottle or whatever. You know, I've done that, but but it's it's difficult at most. And, and, and the labor involved in, in a plant getting them off, they just won't accept it. They won't accept it. That's so the it's thing. style yeah. over function. We want it to look pretty, but we don't care if we're going to mess with the recycling process. Yeah. Now, several people asking about recycling batteries. Wendy, making the comment that certain stores used to have recycling boxes yeah. for them and have done away with them. So I heard from now? Pick and, Day, Pick and Pay that they're starting uh, an e-waste e uh, recycling uh, facility again. Okay. So look out for that. But batteries, uh, don't put into your, your general recycling right now. It will go. They will go straight to to the landfill. While we're on that subject, Wendy, are there any other no-nos that yes. people might commonly think should go into recycling but actually okay. shouldn't? So I got this um, from a Cape Town-based curbside collection company called Kirby. Mm -hmm. uh, they service a lot of uh, Cape Town um, suburbs. So under paper or cardboard, um, don't put in the ones with plastic windows because that's two different substrates and it causes issues. So okay. I've, I can think of a... Um, you know the ones we're talking well, about, uh, like a visible window so that you can see the product through. Can I say, unless you've taken the time to separate it Which yourself, is what I do, yes. Would that be okay? Yes. So if you remove and separate the yes. two different types of plastic. Just rip it off. Okay. So it's just pl plain board. Um, okay. I do a lot of that. Wax paper, the wax will contaminate. Baking pa paper, same story, no. Muffin cups, no. You can imagine that a bit of cake on A little store. bit of yogurt stuck to the yeah. bottom or something yeah. like that from the baking process. When yeah. it comes to plastics, uh, you c the big one kilogram or one liter tubs are fine, but the little six pack single serves, so beloved of moms with school going children, no, don't you can't put, put those no, in. different oh, substrate. Yeah. Okay. I've heard that before. In fact, I said that on this show nearly six years ago, but I um, uh, it's interesting to see that that's still the case um, all these years later. Oil bottles. Uh, the oil uh, on the on the glass and whether it's the plastic, plastic or, yeah. or where we're talking plastic here, it's not it, it contaminates the process. Um, so definitely not olive oil, canola, sunflower, etc. No peanut butter jars for the same reason that smear of 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 oil unless you can put it in the dishwasher. I put mine and, in the dishwasher. But don't you yeah. find that the bottle ends up yeah the heat actually contracts them? But that's fine. Um, you can chuck the lids from those those um, peanut butter the plastic lids in. No disposable razors, obviously. No yeah. squeezy sauce bottles. No toothbrushes. There's too many uh, components there. Yeah. Um, fruit and veg punnets. The you could put the clear ones in, but no, not the black ones. A lot of them are black. Don't put the black ones in. Only okay. the clear ones. No takeaway cutlery and straws. Um, no takeaway packaging, clamshells, boxes, etc. Unless they the specifically, I would say, there's some companies that have moved uh, that way. I would clean it and put that in. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of companies have moved towards a, yeah. a, and, and are using that as a selling oh, point. And some of them are saying compostable, which is a whole other debate. We're not going to go into. Yeah. But yeah. again, Wendy, please be very sure you've washed off any remnants exactly. of, of the food Fishy that was inside them. Yeah. Okay. Um, coffee pods, no. Cling wrap, no. Washing powder bags, no. Coffee bags with the fresh, the ground, the beans, none of those. They have a metallic content in them. Reusable shopping bags, no. Sweet wrappers and chip packets. There's a lot when you go and look at these recycling plants. A lot of foil chip packets, which are no no. So don't really? don't put those in. Okay. I've obviously I've, I've had functions at my home, and I and people mean well. In such a sweet gesture, I'll go and look. I've got a recycling bin and I've got a normal bin, and the chip packets. They, I found a lot of them in the in the recycling bin. So I think there's a widespread guilty as charged. Um, I've been um, doing that. No, so okay, those mustn't go in. Um, vacuum bags for the bags for the for the um, uh, vacuum cleaner. No toothpaste tubes. No, the tomato vinegar sachets. I think people are just throwing them all in the same place. Definitely no. Um, 
yeah uh what else do we got glass uh, this is a big one if your window pane bl breaks don't put the i probably this hasn't happened but i probably would have thought i could put it in no uh, it's a different kind of glass i don't know you can't is put it not that a, in. i mean just the, the danger to the person unpacking there, and sorting well, well you would, I would hope that would any be... glass that's broken uh, you would we wrap it in, in newspaper some or... newspaper something other something else recyclable but yeah no no window pane glass no windscreen glass or broken aquariums <laughs> goodness <laughs> okay um and then um i've added this because i've heard it from many recyclers it's 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 an obvious one but it's something that is the bane of all of their lives no nappies no dog poo packets no. i.e I filled with poo no used tissues come on i know people. come on but come you have on. it has to be said apparently yeah. How could you th possibly think uh, that your used tissue full of was, your nasal uh, or a nappy is recyclable or a nappy full of anything? Yeah. No. That's extraordinary to me. I mm. mean, that's just sheer laziness. Yeah, really, because anybody as well. applying half a brain cell to that it's problem would know that that's not yeah. recyclable. And imagine what that says about, to me, as you said, disrespectful. That that speaks of contempt for the person yes, who is I going think to be verging on contempt, unpacking yes. the bag at the yeah. other side of it. So That's really awful. Uh, somebody's asking, can we please share the list that Wendy's just provided? Um, look, we're going to share the podcast of this entire conversation, which you are welcome uh, to, to to circulate. But I can ask our online team to draw up a, a, a list that we can put on yeah, the Facebook page, etc. as I well. I did ask a company that's very active in, in um, curbside deliveries uh, as well, another company, to ask a, a very comprehensive set of questions. And unfortunately, the answer hadn't come through by the time we, we went to air. And when I do get that, we can share that as well in terms of what are their biggest bugbears um, uh, in, in, in their work in collecting um, mm. supposed recyclables from people. What are they spending time just tossing to one side because... They can't be recycled. And here is the bottom line. Somebody saying, I live in a complex with a dedicated bin room and there are separate bins for recycling, for paper, glass, tin, plastic. But it is so difficult to get all of the residents to do the right thing. We have tried and we will keep on trying. Well, I'm really glad you added that last point. Mm. Um, it needs to be made commonplace that we do this and we do it the right way. And that's why, to circle back to where we started in conclusion, Wendy, the, the reverse vending machine might seem like a gimmick. It might seem like it's not going to take enough to make a difference, but it's about normalizing recycling. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. The, totally. This is what we all do, and this is how we do it. Mm. They're clean, the lids are on, we respect the process, we keep it clean and nice and, and make the life easier for the people that are going to do the hard work down the line. And we make you recognize that there is value in those things. They are exactly. not to be cast aside. It's not rubbish. It's not rubbish. It is somebody else's, perhaps, mm. and way of living. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for all the work that you do to conscientize our listeners uh, with slots like this, Wendy. And thanks for the research on this one. We will make sure that that list of no-nos is shared. I'll ask our digital team to put together an article for the website and, uh, and Facebook page. Wendy Nola, chat again next week, Wednesday. Thanks, Pippa. Lunch with Pippa Hudson on Cape Talk.